most people assume wood rot is inevitable. Give timber enough time, moisture and cold, and it will decay. Modern builders accept this as fact and try to delay it with chemical pressure treatments and synthetic sealants. Medieval builders didn't accept it at all. They expected wood to last for generations, not decades. Cathedrals, bridges, barns, ships and homes were built with untreated timber that still survives today. That durability wasn't luck. It came from an anti-rot technique so effective that modern construction quietly abandoned it in favour of faster profits and disposable materials. Once you understand what they did, you start to realise how much knowledge has been lost. Medieval builders understood rot as a process, not a mystery. Rot is not random. Medieval craftsmen didn't know microbiology, but they knew patterns. They noticed that wood rotted fastest when moisture became trapped. They observed that timber exposed to air and able to dry lasted far longer than sealed, damp wood. Instead of trying to hermetically seal wood the way modern builders do, they focused on moisture management. Their anti-rot trick was not a product. It was a system of preparation, orientation, and surface treatment designed to keep wood dry internally, even in wet climates. The abandoned trick was deliberate charring combined with airflow. One of the most overlooked medieval practices was surface charring, sometimes called fire hardening, followed by strategic exposure to air. Timber beams, posts and foundation elements were lightly charred over open flame before installation. This wasn't burning the wood for strength alone. Charring altered the wood's surface chemistry, destroying sugars and nutrients that fungi and bacteria rely on. It also closed surface pores, slowing water absorption without trapping moisture inside. Once installed, the wood was positioned to breathe, never buried tightly against damp surfaces. Modern sealants create a plastic shell. When that shell cracks, moisture gets in and becomes trapped, accelerating rot. Charred wood behaves differently. The carbonized layer is hydrophobic, meaning it repels water, but it remains vapor permeable. Moisture that enters can still escape. Medieval builders understood this through observation. Beams treated this way survived ground contact and constant exposure because rot organisms simply couldn't establish themselves. This is why charred foundation posts are still found intact in medieval structures across Europe. How medieval craftsmen prepared wood before charring. Preparation mattered as much as the fire. Timber was felled in winter when sap content was lowest. It was then seasoned slowly, often for a year or more, under cover, but with airflow. Only after drying did charring begin. The fire was controlled and even scorching the surface until it darkened but did not crack. After charring, the wood was sometimes brushed and treated with natural oils or animal fats to stabilize the carbon layer. This wasn't about appearance. It was about function and longevity. How modern builders abandoned this knowledge. The industrial age demanded speed. Modern construction replaced longevity with replaceability. Pressure-treated lumber and chemical preservatives promised faster results even if they failed sooner. Fire hardening disappeared from mainstream practice because, well, it didn't fit assembly line building. What was lost wasn't effectiveness but convenience. Ironically, builders now spend more money repairing rot than medieval builders ever did preventing it. So, how you can apply this medieval method today?
This technique is completely usable now. For outdoor posts, garden beds, shed foundations, or timber framing, start with dry wood. Char only the portion exposed to moisture, especially ground contact areas. Use a propane torch or open flame and move evenly across the surface until it turns black and slightly glossy. Let it cool naturally. Then brush off any loose ash and apply boiled linseed oil or pine tar to seal and stabilize the char. Install the wood so air can circulate around it and avoid direct soil contact when possible. The combination of charring and airflow recreates the medieval anti-rot system almost exactly. And yes, there are real examples where this method still proves itself. Traditional Japanese builders independently preserved the same technique, which is why to this day charred cedar siding still survives centuries later. In Europe, medieval barns and churches reveal charred foundation beams that outlast modern replacements. Survivalists and off-grid builders now use this method for fence posts that remain solid decades longer than pressure-treated alternatives. Garden beds built this way resist rot without leaching chemicals into the soil. Tool handles last longer and resist moisture damage when lightly charred and oiled. What this teaches us, really, is just how clever medieval engineering intelligence was. Medieval builders weren't primitive. They were, in fact, methodical observers of nature. They didn't fight moisture with chemistry. Instead, they worked around it with physics and biology. The anti-rot trick they abandoned wasn't flashy, but it was devastatingly effective. It reminds us that durability comes from understanding materials, not overpowering them. In an era obsessed with short-term solutions, this knowledge matters more than ever. If this kind of deep historical knowledge matters to you, subscribe to In The Beginning. Share this video with fellow history buffs, builders, and survivalists who value methods that actually work. These techniques survived centuries for a reason, and together we can make sure they aren't forgotten again.